Ah, well, welcome back, everybody. So I've had a subscriber that asked me a while back to build him a fire pit. Had several, y'all, actually. This guy's been waiting for quite a while, uh, so I appreciate that. Finally have cleared my schedule today to do a few things around here and try to knock one of these out. I know you've already seen me build one of these before, but I got a new measuring device that y'all recommended that I think is gonna help me really knock these out even quicker and be more efficient. So I figured I'd make another video and show y'all that. Now, yes, I'm using propane tanks. These are already purged. The reason I cut the top off so I can get the last of the fittings out, fill these with water to completely purge them again. So if you go cutting on propane tanks, that's on you. Make for sure all the propane's out or it could be dangerous. Not happy. All right, so now we just wait, filling it up completely with water until it shoots out that second hole that I opened up for escaping the air and gases. Flip it over, dump it out, then it's safe to cut. All right, so if y'all watched my last fire pit build, I was really struggling with how can I get a nice, clean, perfectly straight line all the way around these things. So I wound up putting it on the floor and literally driving around it with a uh, chair you know, that's on wheels and drawing a line. And that worked, but I have a lot of bigger tanks that uh, I just don't want to manhandle inside. And I can't believe I didn't know this because I used to work at a mill in an industrial atmosphere. I've been around pipe fitters and stuff for years and years and years. But y'all recommended this pipe route. I had no idea they made it, but I knew they had to have something out there like this. I just didn't know what it was called. So I took your advice and bought the biggest one I could find. It will not fit all the way around this tank, but I think it's gonna work out just fine for what I wanna do. So it's basically just a fold up roller. All right, so as y'all can see, it's got all kinds of different measurements and uh, charts on here for doing pipes. So that's pretty cool, but I don't do pipe. I just want something I can wrap around. It's very rigid. I can't really bend it straight up and down. So now that I've made my marks on the tank, looks like I can wrap this all the way around. Well, not all the way around, but you know what I'm saying. Now I can line it up with every single mark and can draw me a line so quick. So thank y'all so much for this suggestion. This is exactly what I was looking for. All I've got to do is draw a line all the way around, flip the tank one time, put a couple more dashes on there where I want, draw the line again, and I'm done. So I love this idea, thank you.
As with most things in life, the more you do them, the easier they get. But this was so much easier than the last time. Finally getting me a routine down. All right, typically I tell whoever gets these pits from me, uh, I haven't got into painting them yet. I just don't trust that high temp paint as hot as I get some of these pits. I mean, we'll get a blue flame in here, and I've even seen the outside of these glowing red. So I just have my doubts about paint holding up. So typically I tell whoever gets these from me, light a really hot fire your first couple times. It'll smoke the paint off the outside, eventually burn it off. It'll flake off and ultimately give you kind of a rusty patina. I really like the way it looks. Actually, I need to dress that pit up just a little. There's a couple pieces of paint on it, but that nice, even rusty color looks good. Problem is you have to burn a couple hot fires and burn that paint off, which is, uh, you know, not the best smell, although it does burn off pretty quick. I have got this uh, propane weed burner. I'm thinking about trying to heat this paint up before I get this to the customer and go ahead and hit it with a wire wheel and see what I can get off. This could turn out being a disaster, leaving blotches of paint everywhere and looking even worse, um, but it's something I do want to try. I'm going to constantly be experimenting, trying to figure out how I can get these done quicker and get them to people looking like they should. So that's what I'm going to do right now, see if I can scorch this paint off. Well, sadly, even hitting this with that propane burner did not release the paint. And I had the paint to the point that it was bubbling coming off. All it did was make it kind of sticky and maybe even a little harder to get off. So if y'all have any good ideas on how to get, well, I keep calling it paint, really it's galvanized coating, off of these, let me know. Only thing I know to do now, is I'm gonna go ahead and drill the hole in it, get it to where it's almost complete, and we're gonna burn a real hot fire in it tonight. Then in the morning before I deliver it, I'll probably throw it back on the track before it, go over it again with the wire wheel and see if I can release any more paint. But uh, either I'm about to come up with a better idea on how to get rid of this galvanized coating or I'm about to continue to sell these and just let the, you know, the person know a couple really hot fires and it'll pretty much burn it off and then get that nice rusty patina.
All right, well, I'm actually glad I'm doing this. Let's give y'all an idea of how much firewood it'll hold and what it looks like. Now, keep in mind, my firewood's cut a bit long, which I typically do for fire pits. I just don't measure it. Most of what you get for uh, residential is like 16 inches. This stuff's 18, some of it up to 20 inches. But as you can see, you can put quite a bit in this pit. And once you build up a coal bed in it, you can really pile it on. We burned a nice fire in one of these just the other night. All right, so I just wanted to show y'all, well, as you can see, somebody's already enjoying this. But just want to show you, this hasn't been going but just a few minutes. There's really no coals in it. And this is uh, relatively green wood. I am out of really seasoned wood. This is only three months old, so I could get this burning a whole lot hotter. But as you can see, practically no smoke, and we haven't even got a coal bed going yet. And the smoke I am seeing, that's actually the paint burning off on the outside. So as you can see, practically no coal, still solid pieces of wood. And I can live with that amount of smoke. I'll show this off again once we get a good coal bed in there and show you exactly what it looks like. All right, before we lose light, I just threw some actual chunks of pressure treat in here. You can see the ground is scorched. The bottom got so hot, it ignited the pressure treat wood. So that's something always to keep in mind with a fire pit. But as you can see, no, I didn't paint this white. It just got so hot, it just burnt the paint off. I'm going to try to buff that out tomorrow with a wire wheel. I think it's going to come off because it's already fallen all on the ground. But I've got really good coals in there now, and I just wanted to show y'all. Do you see a tremendous amount of smoke? Just a tiny little bit, and I just smothered the fire. So once I open that up and get some uh, air back to it, it is as close to smokeless as I've seen. It does really well. So just kind of wanted to show that off. I think we're going to wrap the video up here. Enjoy this fire. We'll catch you on the next video.